YouTube what's happening. The coffee is flowing. It's Saturday morning. There are 15 baseball games to talk about today. But first, let's do a little recap of yesterday. 12 and 5 overall. Great day. We love to see it. Over seven units of profit back into the bankroll. Some great calls in there, like the Angels money line. Detroit with the stomping skeins over strikeouts. Just a great day overall. We love to have those. This is the third green day in a row. We'd like to see that. Today, 15 games. We'll go ahead and jump into these and see what value we can find. Our first game, we got the White Sox and the Yankees. Day game, 105 Eastern first pitch. We got Keller with his 284 going against Gill with his 251. Keller's only pitched 12 innings, so we really don't know too much about him. Gill, pretty established, we know that. Currently, the Yankees are minus 325 on the money line. Over under is seven and a half with a little bit of juice on the over at 125. For this one, I'm looking at the numbers. Uh, both batting averages are trending up for both teams compared to the last week, slightly up. Uh, Yankees runs aren't trending anywhere. They're staying about the same. Meanwhile, the, the White Sox runs are trending down, so they're not scoring as much as they were in the past two weeks. They are in the past week. So this one, would, I don't like that 325. Again, it'll probably go into my line parlay like yesterday. Um, I'm probably going to do the exact same bet I did yesterday. I'm going to do minus one and a half of the Yankees and move on to the next game. All right, second game. We got Pittsburgh and the Chicago Cubs. We got Falter at his 415 ERA and Shota at, or Shota, how do you say that? 0. 0.96, nasty ERA. Currently on the money line, the Cubs are a 210 favorite and the over under is eight and a half with a little bit of juice on the under at 125. We see who's pitching and we see why that is what it is. Falter's 415 is the, not helping that at all. Uh, currently, over the last week, both teams are averaging combined 10 runs a game. The Pittsburgh scoring more than Chicago. Uh, both teams are batting decently. Um, this one, I don't see any value in the sides or the run line. I'm going to take the Cubs' money line, throw it in the money line parlay because I showed us just amazing. He's uh, just like yesterday with Scuba. He's going to, I don't see a reason why he doesn't go 6 0. So. I think Pittsburgh got the runs yesterday. They don't get made today because of Shota, and I think the Cubs can get some runs. All right, game four, we got Tampa Bay and Toronto. We got Eflin and his 391 going up against Gossman and his 495. Currently on the betting market, we got the Blue Jays at minus 135, over under 7.5 with a little bit of juice on the over. The main thing that stands out when you look at stats, last seven days, you look at the batting averages, Toronto can't buy base right now. They are dead last 30th in the majors at 151 given it's only been four games but still that is atrocious even over four games these are these we thought we had talent here and somehow they're favored meanwhile tampa is only 19th yeah they're doing 229 but they're not dead last when it comes to run scoring tampa is averaging five runs a game over the past seven games uh, seven days and Toronto is second to last. They have nine runs in four games. So they are struggling uh, only getting people on base and also scoring runs. This one, I don't like the over under. Seven and a half is a weird number, especially with this one. It could go under. I'm going to take Tampa Bay on the money line since I'm getting plus money as them being an underdog for some reason. So I'm going to take Tampa Bay and move on. All right, next game, we got Colorado and San Francisco. We got Todd Black, Block, however you say it, his three ERA going up against Kyle Harrison and his three, four, two ERA. Currently on the betting side, we have the Giants at minus 200 with the over under set at eight and a half with a little bit of juice on the under. When it comes to the stats, Colorado was number one in batting average for a few days, but now they have cooled off a good bit. They're only six now. They did drop to six, but they dropped to a 275 average. Meanwhile, San Francisco is ninth at a 257 average. So both teams are batting top 10 in the majors right now. Run production wise, Colorado is still eight at 27 runs and Giants are still 26. So they're both putting up runs. They're both getting on base. Both pitchers, they have around a three RA. I like this over under. I think I'm going to ride with the over in this one. Get that plus money, that even money at eight and a half. I don't really trust. I don't trust the Giants to win. Colorado's been on fire. They, they yeah, they lost 10-5 yesterday, but, I mean, they've been on fire. He ride the, the streaky teams. So, I'm going to rock with the over in this one and move on to the next game. Next up, we got Seattle and Baltimore. Only issue is Baltimore has not put out their starting pitcher yet. We have no clue who it's going to be. I can't find any information on it. Again, if we don't know who the starter is, how can I bet on it? I don't even know how you have odds out yet. So 
Seattle is putting out Castillo, 3-3-1 ERA. Pretty nice. Both teams are pretty closely matches in Baltimore, but I can't do anything with this one until I know who's pitching, so this one's going to be a complete pass. All right, next up, we got the Mets and the Marlins. How about the Marlins with an 8-0 win yesterday over the Mets? Don't let them get hot because that's what they're doing. Uh, Severino's going out with a 3 ERA for the Mets, while Garrett's going out with an 8-4-4 ERA for the Marlins. Uh, currently, betting markets. Uh, Mets are minus 135 on the money line, over under 7.5 with some juice on the under. Uh, pretty clear why when it comes to the averages. Uh, the Mets improved. They're up to 217, which is good for 20th in the majors. And Miami is at 12th now at 246. They're batting pretty good. Run-wise, Miami is 15th. They've scored 23 runs over five games, a little over four runs a game. The Mets are still pretty far. They're, they're a little bit behind. They're at 19 runs over six. So they're under three runs, a little over three runs a game themselves. So this one, I don't like either side. I don't like the money line. I don't like the over-under. This one's going to be a pass and move on. All right, next up, we got the Nationals and the Phillies. Uh, we got Gore in his 3-3-8 against Sanchez in his 3-4-3. Betting markets currently stand Philly, minus 180 money line, uh, over under 7.5 with some heavy juice on the under at minus 135. Whew, that's a lot. Coming to the stats, averages, um, batting average, Philly has fallen down a little bit. They were pretty close to the top but here in the last seven games they're only batting 215 as a team over six games that's not that good however washington's worse they are 28 they're batting 168 still they're still in the bottom group of the one tiers of the 0.1 averages it ain't good run wise it ain't much better philly's still scoring runs somehow they have 34 runs in the last six games even though they can't really hit the ball they're still getting the runs so when they have their chances they're taking them washington 10 runs over five games. They're averaging two runs a game. And what they score yesterday? Two runs. So, um, Philly, I don't like the money line. This is a bet. Obviously, it's too much juice at 180. I do think they will it'll go in a parlay, money line parlay. I think I'm going to do the same thing I did yesterday. Same with New York with the Yankees. I'm going to take Philly minus one and a half. Um, over, under, I am not. Seven and a half, I'm not really feeling both these pitchers. I like, I like Gore. I like Sanchez. I just don't see the bats with the averages being so low really doing much, but I could they got the pop. It could easily hit the over. We're going to leave over under alone and take the Phillies run line and money line parlay. All right, next up, we got the Twins and the Guardians. We got Overwood is 3.77 and Allen is 5.56 ERAs. Currently on the betting markets, the Twins are a minus 120 favorite on the road. Over under is seven and a half with some decent juice on the under at 125. Averages, what I always look at, we find Minnesota. They are 29th. They are batting 153 over the past five games. Wow, that is just terrible. I mean, it's still better in Toronto, but it's still pretty bad. Um, Cleveland, not too much better. They're 21st, but they're, they're batting 217. So both teams are still struggling to hit the ball. I said yesterday the under was easy. It was easy. Both teams are struggling. Uh, runs wise, let's take a look here. Um, Minnesota's dead last. Eight runs in five games. They cannot score to save their lives. They are averaging one point, what is that, 1.6 runs a game over the past five games. Oh, and then the Guardians are. They're 14th. They got 24 runs in five games. So they're doing a little bit more of the heavy lifting. If anything in this one, um, with Logan Allen with a 5.56, five, I don't like that. I don't trust that over under with the with poor batting, but they can score runs. That could go either way. I think this one's going to be a full on pass for me today. All right, next up, we got the Brewers and the Astros. Milwaukee, one of the few losses I had yesterday. Wilson, 265, going up against Verlander, 338. Odds markets, Houston, 170 on the money line. Currently, over under 8.5 with some juice on the under at minus 120. Statistics were the same as yesterday. Houston's batting 302 in the last six games. Brewers are doing 289 over the last five games. They're both batting well. They're both getting runs. Houston's averaging six runs a game. Houston, uh, Milwaukee's averaging five runs a game. That's over 11 runs a game for both of them. Both pitchers are pretty decent. I like that. I Definitely don't touch the under. I'm leaning the over just because 
in baseball, you ride your streaks. And if both teams' bats are on fire, I'm going to take the over in this one. So over eight and a half, I'm not going to touch a side. I don't know which one to go with. So just the over, and let's move on. All right, next up, we got Oakland and Kansas City. Kansas City put it all on Oakland yesterday. Couldn't bet it, didn't know who the pitcher was, but I don't think it even mattered. Stripling is 498 and has 1 and 7 record. They're going up against Lugo, his 6 and 1 record is 166 ERA. Betting markets, Royals are only 180 on the money line. That's interesting. Over under is nine and a half with some decent juice on the under. Looking at the stats here, we come over to the average and we see that Kansas City is 17th with a 2 3 4. Oakland is going back into Oakland territory. They're 27th, only batting 184. They are struggling to hit the ball. And now they get to go up against Lugo, who is his whips below one, his ERA is 166, and his strike out to K ratio is amazing. Yeah, I'm taking Kansas City on the money line for sure. I'm actually thinking with this way this setup is, I think I'm going to take Kansas City not only to win, but also on the run line minus one and a half. We're not going to touch the over under in this one. Nine and a half is a weird number. The stats do not back that up. Uh, under might be good, but Kansas City might just dominate Stripling here. So we're going to take Kansas City money line and run line. All right, next up, we got the Padres and the Braves. We got Yu Darvish in his 2 4 3 going up against Elder in his 4 7 9. Betting markets currently have the Braves as a 120 favorite at home, over under 8.5. Heavy juice on the over at minus 130. Um, statistics wise, the Braves are 13th at 245 in the average world, and San Diego was 10th at 252. So both teams are batting decently. The issue is they can't score runs. When it comes to the runs, the Braves are 23rd and the Padres are 23rd. They're both tied. They both have 14 runs over the last five games. That's not even three runs a game, guys. That combined is terrible. And now I get eight and a half and some plus money on the under. I don't know what's going on here, but if I see the stats to back it up, I'm taking that. So this game, we're not going to touch the side. We're going to take the under eight and a half at plus 105. We could even wait for it to get bumped up to nine and a half, which will most likely happen sometime before the game starts. And maybe takes like minus 120 juice. But either way, we're going under in this one. All right, next up, we got the Angels and the Rangers. We got Patrick Sandoval and his 5.0 ERA against Jose Arena at 362. Betting markets currently have the Rangers as a minus 135 favorite. Over under 8.5 with some... Actually, there's no juice. It's right in the middle, 8.5. When you come to the averages... Currently, the Angels are fourth in the majors over the last week when it comes to batting. They're batting 298, and we saw that yesterday. They dominated yesterday. Um, the Rangers themselves are not doing so well. They're 26. They're struggling. They're at 199. That's a huge, that's a big discrepancy. We're already leaning the Angels. We took them yesterday. We might have to take them again today. Over, under, I with these two pitchers, that comes out to an eight-something. I'm not really liking the over, under. I Angels plus 115 on the money line looks pretty good. I don't want a plus run line. I don't like taking plus run lines. It just doesn't. I don't like it. Some people like those. I I just personally don't do it. I rather just put money on the money line and just hope it hits, but go from there. So for this one, we're going to take the Angels money line and move on to the next one. All right, next up, we got the Boston Red Sox and St. Louis Cardinals. We got Cutter with his 224 going up against Mikulis in his 619. Current betting markets, Red Sox minus 120 favorite, over under of eight and a half with some juice on the over. Statistics wise, averages, St. Louis is second in the majors over the last week and batting average at 304. They um, also have about six runs a game during that time. Meanwhile, Boston is coming in at 15th, you know, middle of the pack at 243, but they're getting about four runs a game. So right there, you already have your over just because the bats. This one, I don't trust the over under, I mean, the money line. Uh, if anything, I will take St. Louis at home as plus money dog uh, and lean the over as well. And yeah, we'll go with those. We'll take, we'll take St. Louis money line and the over of eight and a half in this one. All right, next up, we got Detroit and Arizona. Detroit won by almost two touchdowns yesterday in the amazing blowout win. Uh, Flaherty is 388 are going up against Gallon and is 286. Betting market wise, we have Arizona at 150 on the money line with the over under of seven and a half with even juice on both sides. Statistics wise, Arizona's 24th in average, only batting 213 over the last five games and only averaging a little over three runs a game. Uh, 
Detroit, not too much better, but they're 16th. They're batting 240, but they are getting a little over four runs a game. So both teams not doing too hot. Over under seven and a half for a reason. This looks pretty straight. I don't see an advantage either way. I don't I don't see an advantage on the money line. This one's going to be a full-on pass for me. All right, last game, we have the Reds and the Dodgers. I said yesterday the Reds may have the stats, but something fell off. And what happened? The Dodgers won the game. I mean, they were a 260 favorite. You shouldn't win like that. Today, we have Ashcraft and his 4-1-2 going up against Bueller and his 7-3-6 ERA. On the betting side, real quick, we have the Dodgers, as a, again, as a 240 money line favorite. And the total is 8.5 with an over-under with slight juice on the under at 125. Statistics side, we come to the averages, and the Reds are batting 267, which puts them at eighth. Uh, looks like they're getting a little over four runs a game in that span, and the Dodgers are not doing, they're doing better. They're 18th now, 18th at 232, and they're also getting a little over four runs a game. So um, both these pitchers give up runs. The over under is at eight and a half, with a little juice on it. It is the late game tonight. I am going to be taking the over in this one because. Both teams are batting pretty decently. Both pitchers give up runs. And it's nighttime. I want something to watch. So I'm going to put over on this one and call it a day. All right, that's it. That's the full coverage. All 15 games. Here are all the bets. Drop a subscribe. Drop a like. Let me know which ones you're fading following. And we'll see you tomorrow.